Um, I feel very honored to be here as my first trip to this country. Uh, like you all, I'm um, very impressed with the wonderful speech just made by Dr. Yatsuko about the reality of the, the nuclear energy from uh, the global standpoint. And um, now, <coughs> here I am to talk about the reality of the nuclear accident from uh, microscopic and macroscopic standpoint. But before jumping into the, de the specific discussions, I'd like to spend some time to let you refresh your memory by showing some symbolic pictures. The earthquake was the start of everything. Soon followed by huge tsunami. About a day later, Unit 1 exploded. A limited evacuation started before evacuation, but soon escalated to the full scale after explosion. Small children, patients in the hospital, animals, young and old, boys and girls in a big single room for many days with no privacy at all. Empty st <coughs> street, hungry dogs looking for their masters or something to eat. Large areas extending more than 200 kilometers from the site were contaminated. Anti-nuclear campaign, access to restricted the areas, the blocked. Many evacuee camps constructed at various locations over the, over the country. Politicians visiting uh, evacuee camps to say, I'm always with you, only during election campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Large quantity of uh, radioactive waste accumulated at uh, the various locations in the vicinity of the site, waiting for interim storage before the final disposal. I think there's nothing new for you. So let's dig, dig into the details. Hidden facts behind the official statement. I don't mean our government is intentionally concealing something. Tsunami caused the accident. No earthquake damage with any safety-related components has been confirmed. All residents evacuated with no acute radiological effect. These statements are not wrong, but they are actually very tricky. There are many good reasons why Fukushima accident is called man-made accident. Design basis for earthquake and tsunami were determined with uh, insufficient conservatism. There were also many design flaws <coughs> undetected and uncorrected before the accident, including the one directly responsible for unsuccessful containment venting and hydrogen explosions. There were many lessons not learned from a previous accident, including the fact that no technical support center was provided adjacent to the main control room, resulting in serious lack of communication 
and instructions to the operator. Physical separation of uh, the power distribution system is a fundamental requirement for many countries, but not the case in Japan. As you see, low voltage and medium voltage of uh, the AC power for both A train and B train are housed in a single room. What's worse, in case of uh, Unit 1, both AC power and DC power of train A and train B are located in the same space. This, ex this explains why Unit 1 had the loss of uh, AC power and DC power almost sim simultaneously. Also explains why emergency lighting and the uh, indications on the control panel in the main control, control room were lost immediately. As long as uh, the earthquake damage and the impacts are concerned, in spite of uh, official statement, there were actually many small and large pieces of equipment affected by the earthquake. We may be simply lucky not to have any turbine missile, aftershock was a major factor disturbing the actions by emergency responders. Water tightness of the building was significantly degraded by the earthquake. The Fukushima has been suffering from uh, the, the consequence since then. Evacuation is something impossible to simulate. Many abandoned cars due to bust tires, long waiting lines to gas station with no power operated pumps. There are some facts potentially important with uh, less, attention pay, less attention paid. Uh, what I'm uh, discussing briefly here, um, dynamic effect of a tsunami and propensity of hydrogen explosion. This is before accident. The large circle on the left is discharge outlet of the unit one to unit four. As you can see, this is not protected by breakwater, but directly exposed to the ocean. The smaller circle on the right is the intake the screen of unit four. The, here's um, the mystery I have a trouble with. The many people say the tsunami velocity cannot be greater than 10 meters per second. If so, my knowledge of uh, physics tells it can go only up to five meters when the direction is converted from horizontal to vertical. So I need your help to guess how much or how high it actually soared into the sky. 50 meter or even 60 meter may not be bad guess. This may imply the dynamic 
energy of uh, the tsunami is greater than what was uh, understood previously. Where it, where it is? It's um, directly at discharge outlet, the larger circle. As a consequence, some units of intake screen were washed away over 100 meters to north, and the entire length of the discharge canal was pressurized. Many manhole covers were blown into air. I wonder what happened to the main condenser. The basement of the turbine building of Unit 1 through Unit 4 were completely submerged with heavily contaminated water. So we don't know whether they are intact or damaged. But one thing we know for sure is that the systems, structures affected were not seismically qualified, were not designed to take dynamic impacts. The statistics, static effect or the flooding of the tsunami is straightforward, but the dynamic impact of the tsunami may be greater or more complicated than what was used, what was uh, understood previously. This is a kind of information to be shared internationally, in my, in my opinion. This is the picture of the plant in the United States, whose discharge outlet is again opened to the ocean. The second, the second mystery is associated with the hydrogen explosion. Actually, this may not be mystery. There is a group of people, including myself, strongly believe the hydrogen exploded at multiple locations other than refueling floor or, or the top of a reactor building. One floor below the refueling floor, there are many pieces of equipment covered with white drip marks. Clearly, the large accumulation of steam and hydrogen followed by steam condensation, followed by increased concentration of hydrogen, followed by hydrogen explosion must have occurred. There's a one ventilation duct installed on the ceiling of the fourth floor Again, one floor below the refueling floor. This was completely crushed upward instead of downward. The people say <clears throat> venting is the last resort to prevent the containment from uh, gross failure. This is true if the system is designed and operated properly, which is not the case for Fukushima. What you see here is the complete rupture of ventilation piping on the way to the main stack. These facts may imply prevention of the hydrogen explosion it's not as easy as what was uh, expected before.
there are many <coughs> synergistic affect the, <coughs> the nuclear accident is combined with the natural disasters. Evacuation plan is challenged. The sheltering strategy does not work if the building and housing are crops. The some earthquake damage are recoverable, but they are not recoverable when they are combined with a nuclear accident. Emergency preparedness is important, but the accuracy of evacuation time estimate is very questionable. For nuclear liability to be fully effective, whoever is responsible for the accident, it must maintain the funding almost equivalent to the national budget of this country. I'd like to speak a little bit about the situation beyond emergency planning zone. First, we have to remember there is no physical segregation at the boundary of EPZ. It's simply imaginary boundary. No one paid much attention about the mechanism to concentrate the radioactivity. The slightly contaminated roof is washed down by rainfall, leaving radioactive the sludge in the ditch. Hundreds of millions of uh, cubic meter sewage water is treated every year in Yokohama. Sediments and suspending material is concentrated by the factor of 40,000, leaving a lot of contaminated sludge. It is not a surprise now, understandable, but it was a big surprise when 13,000 cube, 13,000 becquerel per kilogram of uh, radioactivity was detected at incinerator ash two months after the accident. In total, nearly one terabecquerel in 170,000 tons of uh, radioactive waste is estimated just before Yokohama, 300 kilometers away from the site, farther than Tokyo metropolitan area. I don't know what kind of number we come up with nationwide. Psychology is less important as long as the reactors are operated safely, normally. But once it breaks out, terminologies of the science are all useless. I know you are familiar with the terminology, the clearance level. Waste generated at the commissioning plant higher than this level is treated as radioactive waste, otherwise non-radioactive -radio waste. It used to be 100 becquerel per kilogram, but suddenly changed up to 8,000 becquerel per kilogram after the accident. <coughs> Environmental Protection Agency of the United States they set forth the criteria of 40 microsievert per year to unconditionally release 
deconditioning site. This can be converted to the average soil contamination of 7.4 becquerel per kilogram for cesium-137. But as of today, much higher activity is routinely detected at every waste treatment, I mean, waste incinerator in Tokyo. Again, the clearance level for cesium-137 is 100 becquerel per kilogram. But we were told not to worry about to eat food with the cesium contamination up to 500 becquerel per kilogram. Likewise, 90 becquerel per kilogram is the maximum allowable limit for nuclear plant effluent. But we were told not to worry about drinking water with the cesium contamination up to 200. Even though these are acceptable scientifically, it is acceptable psychologically for the general public. Answer is obvious. When buyers have choices at fish market, for example, do we expect contaminated fish and contamination-free fish are traded at the same price? Buyers wish to serve their important customers with the best fish they can find at the market. Same thing is true of farm produce. This is the reality. I sympathize with them, but this is the reality not controlled by science. Another sad example of a psychological effect is the fact that the many young women in Fukushima prefectures have left hometowns. As a consequence, number of newborn babies in the prefecture have sharply dropped. Sociological impact is the most important one, in my opinion. Extinction of home, hometown is totally unacceptable for the old residents, especially for families who had been there for many generations before nuclear plant was constructed. But no matter how angry they are, the community disruption is unavoidable for many realistic reasons. They are forced to belong to new com communities as a stranger. Then they come to face many serious sociological issues. This is mostly because the nuclear victims have a unique the characteristic, quite different from the victims of other disasters or accidents. <clears throat> also, every nuclear victim has the different situation, different background, different statuses. They are not always sympathized, not always warmly welcomed by original residents of the new communities. They are silently and occasionally 
openly harassed. But they don't have a place to go. These difficulties are diff <clears throat> not well understood by the most people of our country, including the Minister of Responsible Agency. The nuclear liability has to be converted eventually to money, but money does not sol solve the problem for many people. It does not solve the problem for many, many people. Now where are we four years after the accident? Believe it or not, everything is under control. It's another, <laughs> the formal expression, but you know what facts are behind formal expression. This is the end of my speech, and thank you for your attention. <laughs> thank you.